Is your name Kiu Sampon? Response My official name, as in the birth certificate, is Kiu Sampon. Questions Besides Kiu Sampon, do you have any other alias? Response Yes, I have one alias, Haim. I do not have any other alias. I also like to take this opportunity to inform the Chamber and Mr. President that I have no other names besides the alias Haim, not as mentioned by Dutch. Dutch himself also acknowledged that he never met me during the three years period of the democratic Cambodia regime. So let me once again clarify that I do not have any other alias. What about the name Non? Is also Non your alias? Response. Non was used when I was in the southwest. When I moved to Stung Chinat, some of those familiar with me in southwest still call me Non. But in Stung Chinat, I am generally referred to as Haim, and that alias was used subsequently. That is after 1975. And none was only used again, as I said, in the southwest. Question What is your date of birth? Response The 27th of July, 1931. Question What is your place of birth? Response In Kum J. Srok Rum Dul, Swai Ring Province. Is that J Commune or Rum J Commune? Respond, it was J Commune. I'm not sure if the official name is Rum J, but from my recollection, it was called J Commune. Question, what is your residence before your arrest? Response, the place that I stay was uh, called O Ta Vau, but I'm not sure of the official name. The official name could be different, but the location that I know is called O Ta Vau. Question What is your father's name? Response <coughs> Long. Question Your mother's name? Question, please wait for the red light on before you respond. Pao Kung is my mother's name. So it's Pao Kung, not Li Kung, because during the investigation first, your, father, your mother's name was known as Li Kung. What is the difference? Mr. Kirsten Pond, you need to wait for the red light on before you speak into the microphone. Response. The surname could be Lee because my uncle's name is Lee Wa. So my mother's surname could be Lee, but from my recollection, her surname is Pao. Question, do you have a wife? And if so, what is her name? Response, her name is So So Chit. Question, how many children do you have? Response, I have four children. The eldest one is a son. The next one is a daughter. 
then another daughter, and last a son. Four in total. How many siblings do you have? Question, response, rather. My mother actually had twelve children. However, many died, and then I became the eldest. Currently, we I have four siblings, myself. Then my younger sister. Then two brothers. The president. So it means you have three. You have two brothers and one sister, and you are the eldest. Mr. Kirsten Pond, can you provide provide us a brief summary of your educational background? Mr. Kirsten Pond, as my lawyer just stated, I have a request for the chamber, the president. Can you respond to my question whether you can or you can't? Then we can proceed with the formality. My last question. Let me repeat: is whether you can describe about your educational background to the chamber, yes or no. Some pawn. Mr. President, of course, yes. The President, if so, you can proceed. I studied uh, in my primary school in Kumpung Cham province. Then I attended uh, the junior high school in Presenu High School in Kumpung Cham province. Then I moved to Phnom Penh. Following my uh, graduation of uh, junior high school in Kampung Cham, then I moved to Sizawat to attend the junior, uh, the senior high school. I finished my senior high school in 1951, but I had to work at the same time after I finished my high school in order to support my mother and my. Uh, brothers and sister for two years until 1953 uh, when I left. Uh, for but when I was in Phnom Penh, I also studied uh, law in Phnom Penh as well when I was working as a teacher in Phnom Penh. And I left for France in 1953 and I uh, graduated uh, after 1958 and I returned to Cambodia. That was all, Mr. President. The President, you went to France. Uh, what was the uh, subject of your study from 1953 to 1958? Response. In France, I pursued my law degree, but actually I went to Montpellier, and then I uh, came to uh, Paris. Mr. President, actually there was a series of uh, events and stories which I could uh, elaborate uh, in details in accordance with the uh, paragraph extracted from the closing order which uh, you read out on the first day. Mr. President, well, of course, we will allow you to uh, read uh, your prepared uh, statement. Mr. President, Mr. Kirsten Pond, you are the accused before this trial chamber. 
and uh, you will remain the accused uh, until the conclusion of these uh, proceedings. And you have the following rights. First, you have the right to a lawyer of your own choosing, and you are entitled to have lawyers at every stage of the proceedings. And it has been noted that uh, from the early stage of the proceeding uh, to date, even in the investigating st uh, phase, you uh, had uh, two international lawyers and one national lawyer. And during this hearing, you have an additional lawyer. So now you have uh, three international lawyers and one national lawyer. During each uh, proceedings before this trial, you has the right to remain silent. You has the right not to self-incriminate, and you has the right to be informed of the charges against you. Mr. Kilsenporn, have you been informed of the charges against you? Response, yes, I have. The President, thank you. Now, do you wish to exercise your rights to remain silent, or you would respond to the question by the Chamber as well as by the parties throughout the proceedings now? A response. I have one suggestion, Mr. President. I would like to comment on the various paragraphs in the closing order, which were read out on the 5th of December. But I understand fully that this is my trial and the prosecution has their own views relating to those paragraphs and particularly their understanding of the uh, contextual elements relating to the closing order and I strongly oppose against their view and as a matter of fact the prosecution must prove the evidence beyond reasonable doubt. That's why I am suggesting, with your permission, with uh, the bench uh, permission, I would like uh, to inform uh, the bench uh, of the, uh, my own view, particularly on the uh, context historical context, and I would respond to question only when I could examine the evidence presented by the prosecution in order to support uh, their assertion. And would your honors allow me to proceed in this manner? Thank you. The President, can you please uh, be specific because the question will be put by the member of the bench and of course uh, judges on the bench uh, would put question to you on facts alleged in the closing order and then other parties, including the prosecution, the civil party lead co-lawyers, and the defense teams of other accused, as well as your own counsels, to put question in accordance with their role in these proceedings.
And your suggestion just now was not uh, quite clear to the bench. Uh, we would like to know whether or not uh, you want to exercise your rights to remain silent, and you would only respond to uh, the question only when you can examine the evidence put forth by the prosecution, or you want to remain exercise your right to remain silent at all stage, and you would not respond to the bench uh, question or to other parties' uh, question. Or you wish to respond only when the evidence is put by the prosecutor, since the prosecutor bears the honors of proof uh, before the chamber. So we would like you to uh, clarify uh, your uh, position on this point so that it is uh, clear for the record. We want to do our utmost to avoid any uh, doubt uh, that may eventually result in the uh, repeat, uh, repetitious uh, proceedings, and it may uh, lead to prolonging the uh, proceedings as well. Mr. Kilsenporn. Mr. President, Your Honours, I would like to make comments in relating to the various paragraphs read out by the chamber on Monday the, tw the 5th of December. But I would like to reserve my right not to answer any question as for now. The question from any parties, because I have to wait until the prosecution bring forth the evidence supporting their views, because I see that their views uh, is contradicting with mine. So this is my suggestion, Mr. President, and I would like to read my statement I have already prepared, and this statement is only my personal comments on the various paragraphs read out on the 5th of December. But once again, for now, I reserve my right not to respond to any question yet, because mm, what is important is the uh, prosecutor's role, because the prosecutor will have to provide all the evidence, and I would respond to the evidence that they uh, present uh, before the chamber. And if I try to answer a question now, whatever question it is, I believe that it will uh, it will relate to the point raised by the prosecutor. So I would like to ask for your permission to wait until the prosecutors uh, put forth the evidence. Then I would respond accordingly. Uh, I would like to ask if the uh, president would allow me to go through this. The President. So now you are exercising your rights not to respond to a question now, but you want to make your 
statement responding to the various paragraphs read out by the graffiers on Monday, the 5th of December 2011. Is, is that your suggestion? If so, the, your request is granted. You may now proceed. Mr. Kilsenporn. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Your Honours. Mr. President, honorable members of the bench, venerable monks, national compatriots, everyone in and around the courtroom. First of all, I would like to reiterate that I do not have an alias known as Kang as indicated in paragraph 1126 and 1598 of the closing order. The co-investigating judges base their assumption on the assertion of Deutsch, even if Deutsch has already admitted he had never met me at all throughout the period of the Democratic Cambodia over three years period. And I would like to make this clarification so that it is clear to everyone. And I am going to enlightened based on my views on the various paragraph in the closing order which were read out by the Greffier on the 5th of December. 1. My activities while staying in France. Paragraph 1126 and 1,159 of the closing orders, closing order, rather. I finished senior high school in 1951. But immediately after I finished my high school, I had to work in order to save some money to support uh, my wife and my siblings. Back then, I worked as a teacher in a technical junior high school. And at the same time, I took a law course as well. And until 1953, I left for Paris. I did not meet Solot Saw, who, who was later known as Paul Pert, because by the time I arrived in Paris, Solot Saw had returned to Cambodia already, and I met only Ian Seri back then. I stayed in Paris for about two or three months. Then a friend of mine who I acquainted with when I was studying in Sisawat High School named Aung Sukun, he approached me and he persuaded me to join the circle of Marxists. And I responded to him that I wanted independence for my country, but I did not understand anything about Marxist or communism. Then he responded, Well, that, that, that was right. That's why the circle of Marxists want to broaden our outlook. 
and our perspective so that we could find ways in order to liberate our country and finally achieve independence. He lured me again and again, and I did not want him to see me as a coward, so I eventually accepted. But I at that time observed the overall situation in Paris. It was politically motivated, so I had to withdraw myself. I had to remain certain distance from them so that I could see from far away and I could contemplate and consider this. And I decided to go to Montpellier, which was in the southern part of France, on the excuse that when the weather in the southern France was favorable to me and I liked that weather, so I went there. When I was staying in that city, I pursued a law school, and I also, uh, I am also registered for business class as well. During a summer break, I came to Paris. I attended a meeting organized by the Circle of Marxists. Then they organized a incursion or the sorry the excursion which uh, included students and members of the Marxists. We had a camp a camping along the beach. By joining this excursion I uh, could understand as to what the circle of Marxists actually did. And three years afterward, I came to Paris to prepare my dissert dissertation on economics. At that time, I had to attend a regular meeting of the Circle of Marxists. But the historical context back then changed very swiftly because the Geneva Conference recognized Cambodia's independence. So it was not like the situation when Pol Pot uh, who were trying to uh, demand for independence for the country. At that time, so lot so, and those uh, people were uh, trying to join the resistance forces against the French colonialism. At that time, they emphasized on the patriotism But when I came to Paris myself, they emphasized on patriotism and in order to protect Cambodia's independence. But the circles of Marxists continue to push its member to join the communist uh, of France. Before I returned to Cambodia, before returning to Cambodia, uh, Ying Seri handed over uh, the role to me, and I believe that probably at that time there was no a better choice for him. Those who were strong believers and active, such as Aung San Suu and Son Sen, all returned to Cambodia. At the senior members like Eun Suk Kam, graduated from his medical college in Raj city. 
and in addition, he was a outgoing person, and he had a lot of girlfriends there, and he enjoyed French dancing back then. So there was nobody to take over. So there was only me myself at that times, and I agreed to accept it because I thought to myself that I would do something that was beneficial uh, in this uh, circle. That is to spur the national uh, patriotism in this circle of Marxists. Back then, I thought that Prince Narodam Ranarat was very firm uh, with his neutral, neutral um, lism, and he he wanted uh, Cambodia to join the Seattle. And he initiated a very courageous diplomatic mission by establishing contacts with uh, socialist blocs. So I thought that probably he, sh he could undertake the uh, economic reforms in the country towards an independent economy as what uh, they have done in other countries, namely in Japan. But it was on a smaller scale in Cambodia. That's why I chose the title of my dissertation That's the uh, challenges of industrialization in Cambodia. Because I was convinced that once we take appropriate measures, the national capitals can be expanded. So the main problem question in my dissertation was that why the then economic structure did not allow for economic development in Cambodia? The answer to that problem question was the industrial commodities from France competed with the handicraft and in Cambodia and small uh, and productions in Cambodia and consequently businesses or production base in Cambodia is squeezed and we could not compete and as a result Cambodia live on a subsistence agricultural economy and I thought that well Cambodia had to take control of foreign trades because this will be a useful tool in order to stimulate uh, growth of small enterprises and we had to orient our forces and our resources to industrialization. On this point, I use the economic theory of Adam Smith. In my dissertation, I did not mention anywhere that uh, we would eliminate currency, or I did not propose the eliminations of private ownership as well, and there was Nowhere that I mention the evacuation of people from the city, the economic forms which I suggested was like the uh, industrial model that was adopted in uh, Europe. But the only difference was the uh, context, uh, 
the social economic context. And I joined the Socialist Communist Party of Cambodia in 1955. Because this French uh, Communist Party worked in conjunction with uh, the uh, citizen from the other colonial uh, country, and they uh, encourage people around the world who were living under colonialism to uh, be to harmonize and join uh, forces against the colonialism. And this party also uh, supported uh, the effort against the uh, Vietnamese war as well. And they also organized other uh, demonstrations against the war in Syria, etc. and etc. And I uh, participated in uh, those demonstrations uh, subsequently. I was convinced that the struggle by the people and the colonialism would weaken the colonial system and would assist my country, Cambodia, to gain independence in a short time. And that is, in fact, turned out to be true. I believe that the achievement by the King Sihanou was the result of the struggle by the Cambodian people throughout the world, in particular the struggle of the Vietnamese people at the time that the armed forces of Vietnam liberate, liberated the areas in Dien Bien Phu. Also, my branch was that for the students, different from the branch of Pol Pot, Yung Sari, Rod, Samun, etc., which was a lab a workers' branch. My branch held a meeting at the center at the universities along Zogdong Avenue in quarter 14 of Paris. The meetings were also held at the international students' uh, residence. However, only one year after that, I exchanged my party's ID card for a new one, as they only discussed the French issues during those meetings which were not beneficial to me. Your Honours, I did not have any hidden agenda or tide when I returned to the country in late 1958. Neither did I have any contact with the Communist Party of Cambodia. Communication could not be done because I had been tracked and monitored by secret spies while I worked for the Lobservator newspaper. Even I became the assembly representative, I was still constantly monitored. They rode the car behind my bike. The tracking was still in, in open even if I became a minister. And for that reason, I could not, and it's not possible for me to contact with the CPK. It was too risky for me to do so. That is one main issue or event that I'd like to inform the chamber during my study in France. And for point number two, 
that is the event uh, upon my return to the country in late 1958. A. Regarding the newspaper observator, which mentions in paragraph 1, 1 through 7 of the closing order. The friends whom I know while I was in France and who returned to the country before I did, including Hu Yun, Hu Nim, and other friends, whom I knew through these two people, proposed that I should publish a newspaper as a voice for the intellectuals, the professors, and the civil servants. That was the initiative for me to publish the newspaper L'Observateur which was a by which was published twice a week in the French language. The stance of my newspaper is to support unequiv unequivocally the neutral policy of CNO, but it emphasized to the Cambodian leaders that there needs to be a measure for democratic reform in order to make a balance in the society and to bridge the social gap between the rich and the poor and so that the lower strata of the society could also benefit from the neutral policy as well as to expand the political basis through opposed the positions, the oppositions by Lonol and his clique. I intended to those the leaders of Campuchia, that's why the newspaper was published in French. Because the leadership level at the time did not really prefer to read the newspapers in Khmer. And the, the target was mainly for the leadership level and the message was also the same. In the newspaper, the articles of interest to the readers is entitled Kien Ko Phnom Penh, that means surrounding Phnom Penh vicinity, which lively describes the daily activities of the ordinary people, including the cyclo driver, the water cart pushers, the ox cart rider carrying vegetable to the market in early morning, the entertainment of the workers in the city who gathered in small groups, drinking pineapple juice under the candlelight, or walking around the gardens near Independence Monument, etc. The newspaper was published and there were only 300 copies for each publication. Some purchasers paid more money in order to support that newspaper. It was clear that my newspaper was not a communist one and it was not financed by the communists as alleged in paragraph 1127. Many of my supporters, financial supporters, were not communists. 
even if there were some communist supporters, the majority of them were the assembly representatives, namely Hu Yun, Hui Nam, Uch Wain, So Nam, etc. The two persons I mentioned last were former professors who were subsequently elected as the assembly representative. And the reason why my newspaper was referred to as the Red or the Communist newspaper was that the King Sihanouk at the time was very concerned about the notion of independence that I had. In order to provide an example to enlighten this issue, I'd like to mention one event. One day, I was called to a special police ministry. That is, during the time that I published the newspaper, the Minister of Interior was Gu Run who was the person that interrogated me in person. High beamed light was shown on my face. After I was interrogated, I returned to my place and I immediately wrote an article in details of what happened during my interrogation and what were the questions and what were my responses. I wrote all the questions and responses in detail and that I would publish in my newspaper at a later date. I believed there are two questions that I like to bring to your honor's attention. Question number one Why do you hate the palace? I was taken aback by that question. And I responded, I do not understand what you mean by that. Later, that minister revealed about a discussion that I had had with other students during a meeting, a student meetings in Montpellier. After he provided me with that hint, I could recall that meeting. That was a discussion meeting on whether or which picture we saw sketch on the on the canvas. Beside, behind the stage that we saw performed for our French friends and for other friends during the celebration of the Khmer New Year. During that meeting, one of a high-ranking one student who was a 
son of a high-ranking officer suggests that I should draw a Jan Chaya. But I propose that we should draw the landscape in the countryside instead. That is a picture with palm trees, with peasants climbing up the palm trees, with a bunch of the container on his waist. And I believed that would be interesting for our French and foreign friends because that would be more attractive to them. Majority of the students agreed with my idea. And the second question that I was asked is why did I not join the public servant after I finished my education and why I opened the newspaper's office? And also, he added that whether I wanted to, to become a king. Is that true? That's why I opened the newspaper's office? Or whether I want to sleep in a wooden mosquito net, literally, which means the coffin. I was speechless by that. Let me now come back to question number one. Within the context of question number one, it means st students studying in France were constantly monitored. A minor issue was also reported to the special police ministry with bias and that they would keep that issues in order to oppose those who show their independent stance. After I was called for questioning, that is two or three months after, I was bitten I was stripped naked in the middle of the road at noon. Later on, I was arrested and detained for more than a month without any order or court order or any charges, and my newspaper was closed down. The president, how long is your statement, Mr. Kiel Samporn? The president, the time is now uh, appropriate for a break, as your statement is uh, still uh, quite some time to go. We shall now take a break for 20 minutes and we shall resume after. Security guard, you are instructed to bring the accused back to his seat behind his lawyers and bring him back to the dock when the chamber resumes.